The chain is one of the most important parts of the bike. It has to go for a hell of a lot of stress. If it wasn't enough, that has to pull up with the torque that your leg power puts through it. It also has immense twisting forces from all of the gear range. So it's not surprising here and there you snap a chain. So here's three ways to rejoin your chain. Uh, tools for the job, you'll need a chain tool or a multi-tool that's got a chain tool on it, particularly one with the second set of jaws. You also need a bent spoke or a third hand tool, a Shimano joining pin, a master link and a pair of pliers. So there are three ways to rejoin your chain, using a dedicated Shimano pin, using the chain tool itself or using a power link. Now these are really handy because you can pretty much just snap together a chain quickly, great if you're out on the trail in the rain, perhaps in a race. They're also really good because you can use them on different branded chains. This one is made by Connex and is compatible with Shimano and SRAM. SRAM and Shimano also make their own respective ones. This is how you use them. To start with, before you use the power link, you need to make sure you've got two male ends of the chain. If you snapped your chain, you may have twisted part of the link, so make sure you remove those. Also, take note, if you take out too many links, you're not going to be able to use all of your gears, so just be cautious of that. So with the opposite sides of the link in place, you simply clip them together and you pull them tight. As you can see, this one isn't pulling tight very easily, so I've got a nice little trick for you to do this. Cycle the chain until this link is on the top, and then you can use the force of the pedals to click it into place. Here we go. Now you want to hold the back wheel. Ideally, you would do this stood over the bike. This is just for demonstration, and you just push down on the pedal. So this method is a classic method of joining a chain using a proper chain splitting tool. Um, I always prefer to look for one that's got two sets of jaws on it. The reason for that is you have one set and you're splitting the chain and the other set is to remove a stiff link. I'll show you how to use both of those right now. So when you're splitting your chain and when you're tidying it up in order to rejoin it correctly, make sure you don't drive the pin all the way out. You need to have enough on the inside of the link here so you can snap the chain links back together. Nice little tip for you to do at home here is make sure that you drive it out towards the outside of the bike, which means you've got access to the tool from this side. So now it's the case of snapping the links together, as you can see here. There we go. And then the next stage is to drive the pin back through using the chain splitter. So the objective here is to drive the pin back through into the chain. Now you've got to be careful here. You don't want to come out too far on the other side so the chain pin isn't staying into the outer link. So just monitor it as you drive it through you will feel a slight hard push as it locates on the far side. So it goes in nice and easy up to here, and I can feel it's just about to grip and push into the backside plate. Now I can see that, and it's equal on both sides. So if you look here, you can see the chain looks like it's new almost. Now sometimes when you're rejoining a chain using this method, you'll get a stiff link. Now this is caused when you're pushing the pin through and it actually pulls both the outers together quite tight on the inner roller. So to remove that, what you do is you lay the chain into the next set of jaws, which is a further away set from what you were just using. And by applying pressure on the pin driver, you actually pull the outer plate slightly further away. Now you only want to do this the minute amount, literally like tiniest hair of a turn will be enough just to free the link. As you can see, that is nice and free, ready to ride. Now, the third method for joining a chain is by using a Shimano joining pin. Now, with a Shimano chain, it's important to use a joining pin or a master link rather than a rejoining the chain using the existing pins in it. Now, the reason for that is the profile of a Shimano pin is slightly flanged at both ends. And if you drive out an existing pin in the chain and you push it back in again, you'll find it's minutely smaller. Now, the chain will still join but it will be a weak link, and at some point it's definitely gonna fail. This is why Shimano have these dedicated pins. They're quite long, and you push them into place, and you snap off the, the additional material. So to join a Shimano chain using the dedicated Shimano joining pin, you need a male and female end of the chain. As before, if you snap your chain and it's damaged in any way, you need to remove those damaged links. Again, if your chain is shortened by doing this to an extent you can't use all of your gears just be cautious of that until you can add in some more links so now it's just using your trusty third hand tool to uh, help you join the chain up so that's holding it nicely for me and ready to put the pin in place note that all of the existing pins here on this chain this is how they look you see this darker one this is an actual shimano joining pin 
the one that's probably used to start with to join this chain. So I'm just lining the chain up and then I'm just gonna push the pin into place. And it's a case of using the chain tool and you wanna drive the pin through and you'll feel a natural resistance where it stops, stop right there. Chain is sat in the first set of jaws here. I'm just gonna drive this pin into place. As I said, you've gotta pay attention when you're doing this and you'll feel it push all the way through and there'll be a nice natural resistance when you get to the correct position, which is about there on this chain. So the chain is joined at this, at this point. You notice there's a large part of the, the Shimano joining pin poking out the back of the chain. So if I remove my third hand tool here, you should be able to see this a bit easier. This piece simply snaps off You've got to be pretty careful doing this. You want to hold the chain by your hands, ideally, because you don't want it to risk twisting, okay? Now, use a pair of pliers. If you've got a multi-tool in your trail pack, it's kind of good to have that sort of thing. And you just gently snap off the end. I'm going with the direction of the chain here, so it can't add any sort of twisting stress to it. I'm literally just going to snap this off. And there we go. So the chain is joined successfully using the Shimano joining pin. However, just like any other joining system, you still need to check you haven't got a stiff link. Chances of that are pretty slim because of the design of the pin, but here we go anyway. As you can see, it moves nice and freely. Job done. Don't forget to click here to subscribe. If you want to find out a bit more about replacing a chain, click up here. If you want to find out how to clean your drivetrain, click down here. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up if you like the video.